Goodbye, Mum. Goodbye, Mum. And I suppose it's goodbye to this channel, really, as well. It was only really set up for you to watch. You weren't that easy to visit when you were in mourning. It's perfectly understandable because you were easy to visit before that. Perhaps I might keep it going as just a way of, well, same as with you, just a way of keeping in touch with what's going on in my head. Perhaps for Olive, the niece, now. Because, as you know, I can't spend a moment with her mum and her dad. A week before Christmas. I'll have to stay away, I'm sure you'll understand. You would remember me saying how I felt the three of you had me visiting my own funeral. I wrote a little eulogy to um, Richard, Jason and Sophie, Jason being born at the same time as me, pretty much. I think you knew them from the hospital. Call the midwife is up to 1969 now. I've done all the repairs and it looks presentable now. Your house is in order. I wrote a little eulogy there and I've posted it to Richard, Jason and Sophie. Um, thank you for letting me know that my mother has died with your card. No one else has. People and their ways have only rarely been not to navigate around. I will make my own arrangements, but say hello to Angie. It's even more difficult to keep to yourself in Savoie, France. But the neighbour with the shed full of giant rabbits is nice. I would probably have forgotten but for being struck by how similar the 1977 Star Wars lightsaber crossing streams were to two little boys toilet training at a big toilet. I'm wondering if that was the writer, the inventor's inspiration. Mum was tiring of toilet training Paul. He always wanted her to hold it for him, so it was I who was told to show him how to pee at the big toilet, standing up, bluntly refusing his whining for help, which sometimes got... But I can't do it! And semi-deliberate splashing off the rim. I told him not to because it was going over me, and put up with his going on the floor too. But after a number of times, I decided to pee on him. How do you like it? Yeah. Making too much noise, with his delight on reciprocating tenfold after momentary discomfort. Small in comparison to his whining. Dad wants to join in the fun and adds a third stream. This ends badly for me because we must pull back our foreskins, or it will be more painful association when we're older. Easy for Paul, excruciatingly painful thing that I must do, that I was not ready to do. Eventually mum and dad took me to a hospital and a young dark-haired surgeon spoke to me. It would happen in its own time. Also that he was Jewish, which he explained what that was when I asked. He could do it a little or a lot, but it wasn't necessary after investigation and a sedative. And in pain, under domed bedsheets, did ask, do I want to go ahead with it? And I will lose the summer with the pain and discomfort. Four-year-old me says, we are here now and I'm already in pain, shall we get on with it? My day playing out on the green, first time out, late on in the summer, a naked little girl came running up to me bumping and hurting. I kicked her between the legs and I was confused why it didn't hurt her. She just wasn't smiling as wildly enthusiastically as she had been. All a first draconian interaction with family and people. The first of many. Too many draconian interactions with people, really. Dad went to a different hospital not that long later. I was told I was the man of the house now. We went to visit. Very big staff room like 
chairs, strange square tiles on the ceiling that cut through an arch. He told us who else there to stay away from and showed us his woodwork project. There was something about electrocution. An Indian doctor in her sari came briefly out of an office to mum and boys said, they're all right, in the corridor with a very tall ceilings on one visit and popped back into her office. Before another visit, Mum asked if we wanted to keep him, Dad, as our dad. A little confused, I said, I suppose so. Does anyone do anything other than that? And Paul was whatever, type shrug. He started laminating fiberglass and smoking after that, and smelt of both and itched. The damaged 55 years plus old fiberglass water tank in the loft that Mum wouldn't have replaced finally gave up the ghost, seeped and soaked the whole house a week or so before Mum died. She didn't want anything for Christmas for a long time. Mum died a week before Christmas. I'd spoken to her on her birthday. I'd got two or three yeses out of her. I don't need an aid memoir, but Paul hosting you at the wake may perhaps have a carousel of slides on a projector onto a wall for you to view of like the olden days. It's nice for me to have a fairly recent memory of your mum and dad, uh, Jason. She was very fond of her giant rabbits. I felt that she might have met the French guy at a show. All the best to you and your family for the future. I have made a fairly conscious decision not to enable people to inflict themselves on my descendants. I hope you and your families are well. Perhaps there is a place for a humour story at a funeral. Perhaps not. I don't suppose you ever watch this channel. I didn't like the thumbnails, but it was always there for you if you wanted it. Olive? It's there for you if you want it. It seems to have attracted more your sort of age group. The analytics tell me. Goodbye, Mum. To my mind, there is only life and then there is nothing. And if, like, your grandchild would see as your great-grandparents, life would have been torture. And life as torture is all there is. But somehow I get the sense that you are where you want to be. Perhaps with who you want to be. Goodbye, Mum.